Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the 3D game programming tutorial series. Last time, we finished The Great Refactor. Main.cpp used to be almost 500 lines of code. Now it's not even 50 lines of code. It's way, way smaller and simpler. And there's still more we could do, but not right now. We're done refactoring for the time being, because any more refactoring would require non-trivial changes to the code base. So we're going to save that for when the code is more feature ready for that, well, event. Right now, it's definitely good enough. We're good with that. Instead, we're going to be implementing the last of the major five elements. And that is collision. You might say, uh, wait a minute, Benny. What about AI? That is one of the five elements, and we haven't done much with it yet. But at this point, there's not too much we can really do with it. Not until we at least have some form of game in there for AI to make sense. We've just, you know, it makes sense to create a game before we get too serious about that one, so I'm not going to be doing too much with it before we actually, well, have a working game. For right, right now, we're going to be starting on, quote, collision. I say quote because we're not really going to be approaching this from the mindset of a physics engine. We're going to be approaching this from the mindset of an interaction system, which is more general. And you'll see what I mean how that works later on, but basically it's like physics, we're just conceptualizing it a little bit differently because that allows us to do a couple cool things that are a little bit trickier to handle when you're thinking about it like a physics engine. So for all intents and purposes, this is like a physics engine. And that's, yeah, that's all I want to ramble about. Let's get to it. So, for an interaction system, what we want is some way to take certain entities, and if they are close enough, if they intersect somehow, for some definition of intersecting, then something happens. They interact somehow if they intersect. That's the basic idea behind a collision system and a physics engine and our interaction system. So. Logically, that means we're starting with the ECS. This defines what entities are, so it makes sense to start here. There's a couple ways we could do this, because you might note the ECS by itself has no way at all to define, well, entities that interact with each other based on proximity. You know, that, that's just not a feature of the system. It's not what it's designed to do. So. We're going to need a separate but related interaction system, hence why I've been referring it to, is some, to it as something separate. And there are a couple ways we could do this. We could implement it as a system for the ECS, as an ECS system, and that is a, that's a reasonable way to do it. You can do it like that and get it working. However, there's a slightly better way to do it. So we're going to be implementing that, and this requires a slight feature addition to our ECS. So, I'm sorry, I know I'm technically breaking my promise that the ECS doesn't need to be changed, but we're not really changing any of the core logic here, we're just adding on an extra feature. Specifically, we're adding the ability to have observers, we're adding the observer design pattern to this. So, on certain actions, like say, creating a new entity, I could observe that and have some event triggered by that happening. So, hey, interaction system, we've just added a new entity, for example. Or, hey, we've just removed an entity. That's what we're going to go after. So, this is where we're going to start. As far as implementing this, it's actually pretty straightforward with a slight twist to it. Nothing too mind-blowing, I don't think, but just a little bit. You'll see. So we're going to have an ECS listener and it's going to have some public methods. Go figure. Notably, this will have a virtual void make entity, or rather, on make entity. And the idea here, pretty simple. Any time that ECS makes an entity, this method will be called, and we can overload it to do whatever we're interested in when entities are made. Same, th same principle here on remove entity. And we're also going to have on add component and on remove component. These are the things we're interested in here. 
Now I'm going to add an ID for add component, remove component, so we know what type of component is being added or removed. And we can change up what we're doing depending on whether it's a transform component or my special fancy squish component or whatever. I don't know. Hey, yeah, that's a general idea. But here's the trick to it. Do we really care about every single entity that's being made here? Maybe, but probably not. Probably we only care about a few particular entities. So we're going to have a private, if I can get it, private variable. And this is going to be very simple. It's going to be an array of UN32 called component IDs. This is just all the component IDs we're interested in. And of course, we're going to need a public. It's going to be a const array of uint32 reference called get component IDs. Guess what it's going to return? Yep, component IDs. There we go. So this is the general idea. And much like we did with ECS system list, or sorry, not private, protected, we have a protected method called add component ID, which takes in UN32, it's void, and it just literally component IDs dot push back. Oh, I didn't name the variable. Um, ID. There you go. Push back ID. There you go. We're done. Well, it should be capital D, but you know what I mean. So next, we're going to need a few changes to ECS itself. Nothing too terrible. We're going to do this the naive way. We're going to have an array of ECS listener pointers. I'm just going to call listeners. And we're also going to have some methods for it. I'm going to just add at the top ECS listener methods. It's going to be very simple. One method, add listener. This is going to take in the ECS listener pointer listener. And there you go. All we have to do is say listeners.pushback listener. And we are done. We're not going to do anything fancy with this. We're going to do the most basic implementation we can get away with. Because frankly, right now, we just need a single listener. We're only making it scalable so that it will be easier later. Potentially. So now all we have to do is, co is call all of these methods, well, in the appropriate places. So I'm going to start with on remove component. So where we have remove component, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with for loop. I'm going to iterate through all my listeners. So listeners.size, I plus plus. Then I'm going to get a const array of uint32 reference. I'm going to call component IDs. Guess what this is going to be equal to? Listeners sub i dot get component IDs. And then I'm going to iterate through this array. So we're going to go through all the component IDs this listener cares about. Component IDs dot size j plus plus. And our check is very simple. What we want to know is if component IDs sub j is the component ID. Because if it is, what we can do is then we can say, okay, cool, this listener does care about this particular type of component. So I can say listeners.i on remove component with the entity handle and the component ID. There we go. And we can also break out of the for loop, or this level of the for loop. We'll continue on for all the rest of the listeners, but yeah. And you might notice immediately this is a double for loop. This and this is happening every single time we remove a component. Probably not the best idea for performance if we have lots of listeners. Right now we only have one listener, so this is actually okay. But yeah, it's something to keep in mind. And in fact, that's the reason why I have the component IDs up here. Because the ECS does know about the component IDs, that does allow us the potential to use a more efficient data structure if we care to. Right now, though, I don't care to. But yeah. So now to an add component, I'm going to do the exact same sort of check. Just the same code, except on add component. 
which might strike you as odd because we're literally copying and pasting code here, but oh well, it could be worse. And there you go, that takes care of adding and removing components. Now we need to deal with adding and removing entities. So somewhere in here, I have the remove entity method. And in fact, it's under ecs.cpp. So what I'm gonna do is, oh, it's right here, remove entity. Oh, and perfect, this is doing exactly what I want to immediately. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this for loop we have right here at the top. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through, yeah, everything in the entity, and I'm gonna look at the components. Because what my goal is here is I want to find if it matches all of these component IDs. Yes, I want to know if it matches all of the components when we remove. And only if it matches all of the components of interest do we care about this entity. So actually, I'm going to borrow a few lines from our add and remove component. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy and paste what we had. This it's okay. I think that pasted wrong for some reason, but there we go, it's fine. So what we're gonna do, once again, go through the listeners.size, go through all the component IDs, and what we wanna know is we want to go through all of the IDs that the entity actually has, all the component types the entity actually has. And if component IDs sub i is equal to entity sub i dot first, because that is our component ID. Then, well, we know it matches this particular one. So our ultimate goal here is to determine if we have all of them. So I'm going to start off with a bool is valid, which actually I'll start it up here. This makes more sense. So bool has component equals false. And if this, ha this is true, then we have the component. So then we can break, and we can move on to the next one. If we don't have the component, then we break out of the base loop, because it's not valid. So actually, I also need an is valid flag like I thought, so bool is valid. So it starts off assuming it's valid. If we don't have a component, then we're invalid, and then we break. So we'll only make it here with is valid true if it has all the necessary components. So finally, if it's valid, if we do match all the logical components, then and only then do we say listener sub i dot, and we're gonna go for the method on remove entity handle. There you go. That's what it takes to change up this remove entity. And once again, you probably notice this is not the prettiest bit of coding out there. It's, it's a triple for loop. This is not ideal. But again, that's why we are setting it up like this, so we could potentially do better. And I just realized I have two eyes in my for loop. That's not good. So here we're going to change this to k. So ij, now we have k. And here we're interested in entity sub k. So there we go. That fixes that issue before it actually becomes a problem. All right. Now for make entity, this is the last one. We're going to do the same sort of logic, except we're going to do it not at the start, but right before we return. So the entity already exists. And here's where we're going to see if any listeners care about this entity being made. So I'm going to go through all my listeners. Component IDs going to need to be changed because that's already a variable in this context. So I'm literally just going to copy and paste that down here. So that's one way to handle it. Entity.size, that's num components in this context. So there's that. And entity sub k is actually component IDs sub k in this context because that's what we were getting here entity sub i dot first that's the id of the entity entity component ids sub k yeah same thing just different names in different contexts contexts 
And let's see, I think this is just about everything. So if it's valid, then what I'm going to say is on make entity handle. So there we go. We only hear about entities that listeners actually care about. So, yeah. Now, one small thing, though. I think I had a slight ordering issue in add component, come to think of it. Yeah, because I actually want to add the component before I check the listeners. And vice versa here. I want to do the on remove listener update before I actually remove it, and I want to do on add after I add it. So they should always be reversed. That appears to be the order I am respecting, so that's good. We now have listeners. And we have a slight bug because everywhere we address our listeners, uh, yeah, listeners sub something that's a pointer. So we need to use arrow notation if we want to actually access it. So I believe that these are the two places we have an add and remove components. And under ECS, this is here, these three. And this is the get component ID. So cool. With that in place, I believe that should be enough for everything to work out splendidly. So that is all for this video. Now the question is, how can we use this newfound listener ability to implement our physics world or interaction world? Find out next time. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned, and I'll see you all in the next video. Don't forget about the Benny Discord, and don't forget you can become a patron if you wish to get early access to videos. And thank you very much to the patrons listed in the video description for being awesome and making these videos possible. Thank you very much to everyone. I will see you all next time.